Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, the abridged code of Jewish law, chapter 141. So we are up to number 15, Tesvov. So we're in the middle of discussing um, the reading of the Megillah. So Mishiach Lafana Megillah Pesula Ochumish. So someone, there's someone reading, there's the, they're the read for the community, and someone's following along, and he doesn't have a kosher Megillah to follow along in. He has a Chumash or some other type of book. So then, he shouldn't read along. He can follow along, but he shouldn't read along. So if we said yesterday that if you have a kosher Megillah, then if you're able to, you should read along and, and say each word. And that way, for some reason, you miss a word, then you said it. If you miss hearing a word, then you said it. But that only works if, you, if you're reading from a kosher Megillah. If you have a, a Chumash or one of these Megillah pamphlets, various things, then you shouldn't. Because when you are concentrating on reading along, you're not able to simultaneously concentrate on fulfilling the obligation from the person who's reading for the community. You can't follow what they're doing and and uh, have a mind to be to go with them. But for him, who you cover, and even if you're a genius and you can multitask at very high level, and uh, and you could pay attention. Maybe someone sitting around you, he's going to hear a word that you say instead of hearing it from uh, the reader. He's not going to pay attention enough to the official reader who's reading from the Kosher Megillah because he's hearing you. And you're not reading from a kosher Megillah. So he's not fulfilling the obligation. He's made this mistake. He's hearing someone reading along and he thinks they have a Megillah and he's paying attention to them. And uh, and that's going to be problematic for the people around him. And uh, likewise, likewise, uh, the same thing. Um, if a person shouldn't assist the reader, off by if he's going off by heart, right? So in other words, if the if the reader gets stuck somewhere, someone shouldn't say off by heart. You know, we're, we're, you know the, the next words, because again, people are going to listen to them and think, oh, I've heard those words and not pay attention to the to the official reader. So if you ever do have someone who's helping, best they should stand right next to him and they should be very say it very quietly, so that other people don't don't um, don't hear. So likewise, there's uh, several verses. There's actually different customs. We're mentioning four here, but some people say uh, another one or two as well. But there's a few verses that um, that speak about um, the whole redemption. And um, the, there's a custom that the congregation says those verses. So since the majority of the congregation don't have a kosher Megillah, or for that matter, even if there was only one person in the congregation didn't have a kosher Megillah, when they say those verses, it can't be at the same time as the chazan, as the one reading for the congregation, because then people are not listening to the reader, they're listening to people reading from a non-kosher Megillah, from a chumash, a book, various things. So what needs to happen is the husband pauses, the, the official reader pauses at that time. Uh, the congregation says the verses, and after the noise is quieted down, the official reader says them again from the kosher Megillah, and everyone hears and uh, fulfills their obligation. Uh, Rabbi, yeah. if, if you're not, if you're, if you don't have a kosher Megillah and you're following along, are you, and you finish Reading, are, are, have you fulfilled your obligation or so, not? So what, what you need to do is you need to hear every word from him. From, so, the, from the housing. Yeah. So you need to hear each each word. Okay. So you might be following along in Hebrew, for that matter, you might even skim in English. But but you need to be listening to what, what the uh, what the Chazan is saying. If you hear every word from him, even 
the truth is, I'm not saying the ideal world, but a minimum, even if for some reason, let's say there's somebody who who has a very basic command of the Hebrew language, and therefore, even though they're hearing the words, they don't necessarily, you know, if, you know, Lahavdil, obviously Hebrew is not the same, it's a holy language, but just to give an example, if someone would say a word to you in Chinese that you'd never heard before, and say, repeat back the word, probably you wouldn't be able to do it. Even though you heard it, but but you can't say because you're not familiar with it. So it's not recognizable even. So Lahavdil, you know, was a separation to the unlanguages and and uh, the Lashon Kodesh, the holy language of the Shem created the world. But, I, I have um, one more question. Uh, when someone has a very heavy accent, uh, if they're from a different country, and the way they pronounce the 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 Megillah is the what they're used to in with their heavy accent is different from what you're used to. It, that's something else. I mean, yes, uh, there the, 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 the is discussion um, about this in amongst the. You know, until modern times, it was never an issue because you, you lived in your shtetl and, and, and everyone in the shtetl read Hebrew the same. Modern times, all of a sudden, you have people with a, an Eastern European accent, which is very different to Western European accent or a Sephardic accent. And even the Sephardim, you have different accents, you know, became a whole... Uh... So there are those who say you need to hear from someone who reads in a way that you're familiar with. It doesn't have to be exactly the way that you read. You might read one way and regularly... Uh, attend the synagogue that reads another way, so you're very familiar with it, and you can you can follow it easily. But um, but there, there are those who write that you do need same. Also, Shabbos uh, Pasha Zohar, mm -hmm. Pasha Zohar, the um, which the Torah reading that we have the Shabbos before Purim, that's the uh, from the Torah actually. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not going to be here, but when we would have our minion. Uh, here the last few years so we have uh, in our minion we have a um, uh, chassidim and we have also a few Bukharians and uh, we actually used to do Pasha Zohar twice but the person would get called up one person read it in an Ashkenazic uh, way without the person making the bracha someone just quickly took over and read it the Sephardic way the, what the Bukharians familiar with and then the person said the bracha we just did it just for that call up you know, that's also not ideal, but, you know, sometimes you, you do what's least worst, you know, the least uh, the least problematic. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, so McGilly <laughs> wouldn't do that because it's a little bit too long, but but you should probably go. So if there's a place that you honestly can't follow because of their, the, the, their pronunciation, then it would probably be better to go somewhere else. All right, so uh, test sign number sixteen. Mishi kava yotzi v'kriyas megillah v'koyel lahoitzi acha. You have a situation. This person, he went to shul. He's heard the megillah. Either read it himself, he heard someone else read it. Whatever it is, he's filled, fulfilled his obligation. And then there's someone else hasn't heard yet, so he can read again to do someone else. Right, so now it's even though that he's filled his own obligation, he can read again for someone else. Im says Now he's reading for someone else. Uh, Fred, right? He's reading for Fred. So if Fred knows how to say the brachas himself, then Yevarach Atzmoi, best he makes the brachas himself, even though he's not reading it. But Fred can make the brachas, and Yankel's going to read for him. Let's say. Vim he isha, and if if it's a lady, taiv yoyse shekari avarich v'ayim shekh the shalom soyts vano the shmoya megillah. Then it's uh, it's better that the the reader reads says um, says the the bracha, and and he said instead of saying the mitzvah to hear the megillah to read the megillah, he concludes with the with the mitzvah to hear the megillah. That's uh, all right. Um, 17 we'll just do quickly outside because it's not so relevant to this year because of the way the calendar falls out. 
But on Shabbos, I'm not talking about if it's a Shabbos that's around Purim, a regular Shabbos. Last week, Shabbos, a Megillah is not Muksa. Megillah is a book like any other book, and you can learn it and study it. But if Purim is a Sunday, in other words, it starts Saturday night immediately after Shabbos, then we have a problem with the, with the Megillah because handling the Megillah is considered like preparing on Shabbos for after Shabbos. So therefore, we can't handle the Megillah and it's Muksa. That's a, it's a nutshell. And it's, uh, it's, it's uh, Tuesday this year. So it's, it's not applicable to this year. So we'll, we'll go to that. Now, Yudches, number 18. Rabbi, I have a question. Yes, please. Can someone bring the Megillah on Shabbat afternoon in order to review? If he's if he's the if he's the Balkor. No. So he can't do that. He can't do that if it's the Shabbos will put him. He can't bring it to Shul. Even in a place where there's an air of um if he's the one who's really and he's really practicing and learning it, there are those who might be lenient letting practice at home, even though ideally he probably shouldn't handle it at all. But to transport it, he, he can't do. Yirches, 18. So we've got a minion. We've got several people who are familiar enough to read Hebrew without the vowels and punctuation, which is a little bit challenging at times. But they don't know the tune. They don't know the musical notes. So what do they do? They're allowed to read even without the musical notes. Now, in Hebrew, the musical notes are not just musical notes in, in, well, in Hebrew, in, in, the, in, the, in the Tanakh. It's, it's on a simple level punctuation. But it also adds a lot of meaning. So first of all, in the Megillah itself, we have more than one tune. So for an example, there's certain verses that speak about the, the mourning, the destruction, and Jews going to exile. And, and, th and then we have the tune that's normally used on Tisha B'Av on that, on that sad day. And then, you know, the various things. So first of all, it, it adds a, a, another layer of meaning. But what you'll notice, a Torah reading in general, when the story gets exciting, the the trop, the notes get all, all uh, you know, it's, uh, some people even theorize, and there's no way to know if it's the truth, but, you know, we see today a lot of Eastern languages, um, how you intone words changes the meaning. And some people theorize that originally maybe Hebrew may have been spoken like that, who knows. But, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, they also, and but they also have a Kabbalistic significance. So ideally, you know, the, the shuls, if you have a really good Torah reader, that even if he gets the words perfect, but there's a, a slight error on the notes, they have him go back and fix it. You know, most places wouldn't do that because you're lucky if he gets the words right. You know, let's, let's not worry about the notes. But here the person doesn't know the notes at all. So forget about making a mistake. He doesn't know them at all. So we'll just say, just read it. So Yaksh Yikras the Tavis Karoi, but he has to be the read the words properly. Rabbi in a way it was just a finished sentence in a way that doesn't change the meaning. So mm -hmm. there can be certain mistakes that don't change the actual meaning of the word. Um slight mistakes. But uh other mistakes, if it once it's gonna change the meaning, then he's gonna to have to redo it or something. Like that. Yeah, sorry, you had a question. R Rabbi, are you saying that the, if they somebody makes the tone, the notes wrong and they read the words correctly, that they have to redo it? No, no, no. Then they have fulfilled the obligation. After they have the not fulfilled. They have, they have. They have. Okay. They have, yeah. So it, it, the music part is not so important? Well, it is very important. We're just saying if we don't have any, this is someone who doesn't know it, okay. you've got to place... You got okay. people know how to read, but they don't know the notes. Okay. So at the minimum, have the guy read and and after the fact you feel the obligation. In other words, it's uh you know, okay. it's it's not the ideal, but but it it, it works. 
Okay, and one more question. The notes, the the actual to tune, uh, is another translation? It's not a translation. I mean, just without getting too much into it, it's very hard to do without showing it to you. But there's, there's, there's a note, for an example. It's called an esnacht. You know, it looks like little fish, you know, those little uh, chicken bones. So, you know, you ever do that with your kids? You take one end and your sibling takes the other end and you pull it right? Looks like one of them. So what happens is that wishbone, divides... Rabbi. Sorry? Wishbone. Yeah, the wishbone. That's right. It divides a verse conceptually. So not necessarily in the amount of words, but in other words, so it, well, I guess each verse to a certain extent is, is a concept. Otherwise that's why it's one verse, but in the verse, uh, it, 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 uh, it breaks it up conceptually. Um, and then you have as a cave, Katon, which breaks that up conceptually, um, Let me just show you quickly. I'll show you something on this. Uh, um, like a comma or a sub semicolon. Yeah, but it's not just that. It's, 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 uh, let me just see if we can get one on online with the trop. You can share, uh, with the notes and share the, uh, share screen. Oh, so you've got plenty of, but without the uh, the notes, um, uh, I want more time. If not, then we. Yes, you know, for, for another lesson, I'll... I'll uh, I didn't mean to, to uh, make this it difficult. It just fascinated me that uh, that it's, that the notes are very important and that it's a certain... Uh, that it adds a layer of understanding. That's fascinating. Yeah. So it's... Uh, has... Um, Yeah. So we'll find one and, you know, maybe we'll do that as a, a side issue one day. Um, um, try one more place. And we'll... Okay, that one. So let's uh, just share screen. And uh, we're just quickly slightly off topic, but you'll see what we mean. So here's, here's the, uh, the Shema. Okay, so let's take this verse. So, all right, it says, V'hav to Hashem alakecha, you love Hashem your God, b'chol avavcha with all your heart, no, hearts, your life, and, and and everything you have. So, uh, this let me just can I make it larger. Let's just make it larger so you can see the notes. So, so this note, I don't know if you can see my mouse. This note. Now I see what you're talking about. It looks like yes. a fishbone. So okay. that breaks conceptually. So, Vahav to Hashem Lekecho, love Hashem your God. Half, one concept. With all your heart, nor your soul, nor your might. Next concept. I broke it up conceptually. Then, these two dots on top, so Kev Katon, they break up till here conceptually. Vahav you should love. That's what you do. Eis Hashem Lekecho, Hashem your God. That's who you love. But that's one concept that so goes to there. So it, it actually, it's not just punctuation. It tells us how to properly interpret the, 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 um, 
the verse. Right? So it's uh, so punctuation itself can 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 change the meaning. You know, on uh, on if you know punctuation, the wrong place in a sentence can change the meaning of a sentence. But here, it's not only the punctuation; it's it's, it's telling us how to break up a a verse into meaningful pieces. You know, what, what is the break? So that's that's uh, that's much more clear now. What you just showed and explained. Now I get what you're talking about. Right. Okay, so so we said a, a mistake that changes the meaning um, is a problem. So, for example, if he says "Shimkara b'mokim Mordechai Yoshev," instead of saying that Mordechai is sitting. He said, Yoshov, he sat. So even though it's the same root word, but it's changed the meaning of the sentence from present to past tense. Well, instead of saying, instead of reading Haman Neufel, Haman is falling, he read Nafel fell. Then a fill the ebony and a yotza. Even after the fact, he doesn't fill his obligation with a mistake like that. Now you are, it's permissible. Okay, we're going to see it's much better not to. But if you had no other choice, it's permissible to have a megillah that you put in it the, the vowels and the notes. Now, pretty much you'll never see one because if you had Chick Hogan to read properly, because there's time of need. In other words, you're stuck in a place where there's no one else to read. It's not like today. Today, it's 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 very easy even to go, uh, you know, most places, again, there are people who live in isolated places. I'm not talking about Alaska right now. But most places, if you get in the car for an hour, in one direction somewhere and, and put me get in a car, you're going to be able to find somewhere where someone can read the Megillah, even if you can't generally. Okay. Most places. Um, but in, in those days when you lived in a little shtetl and uh, you know, and, and at best you had a, you know, maybe didn't even have a horse and wagon, you know, it's a lot of people, you know, you have to go by foot. There's a limit to how far you can get. So it's a time of pressing need. So this is much, this is uh, this is uh, much better than having someone just read from a regular chumash, uh, re whispering, because what's going to happen? He's reading. He's saying the words to the guy. You know, if you didn't, if the re the official reader didn't have the vowels and the notes. Someone else is going to have to read the words to him, and that guy's not fulfilling the obligation because he's he's saying words, you know. Even if that prompter is whispering, so he's not disturbing everyone, anyone else. Everyone else can hear, but he's not listening to the Megillah being read because he's prompting. His focus is on the prompting. Then some Shikhan Rachmat is going to come out that, that he read from a from a Chumash, not Kosher Megillah of any Yotza. And therefore, he did not fulfill his obligation. And so if it did happen, we're going to have to read for him all over again, presumably with someone else doing the prompting. So, uh, you know, if you had no choice, you could make a Megillah with the uh, the vowels and the, and the... But generally speaking, we don't... We don't I've never seen one. I've never seen one. One of my sons, not the son that you met, but the other, other son of the safe, he got an order for one. Um, but he declined. He declined to do it because he, the person lives in a place where he could go somewhere else. You know, it's, it's, uh, he felt it was a bit iffy under the circumstances. So, you know, he declined to, uh, to write it, but someone, someone did request it. Your test nineteen. Um, I think we'll we'll skip through this a little bit because again, hopefully, it's not going to be relevant. 
We're talking about if you're in a place where there is not a kosher Megillah. Right, so hopefully everyone, if they go to a shul or somewhere, they, they have a kosher meal. Again, one of the advantages of our higher standard of living nowadays is people can afford these things that they couldn't have in the past. So most places have. So um, the bottom line of this is, is that uh, a Megillah, we're more lenient than a Torah scroll in respect to disqualifying it. Because a Torah is called a safer Torah. A book of Torah. While the Megillah is actually called the Nigeris, a letter. As we mentioned the other, I think it was yesterday, that we fold it over in, in, in half and thirds. And we read it like a letter. And in a letter, a person will be uh, not as careful with it being exact as you are in a book. And therefore, a certain minor errors um, will be acceptable. After the fact, again, obviously, if you have one that's top notch, you use the top notch one. It's uh, the next one's about uh, a mourner, so uh, hopefully we 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 don't have uh, anyone mourning on Purim. But essentially, a mourner has to keep if they're in shiva, whatever they have to keep it during Purim. They still come and hear the Megillah, but they they're allowed to wear leather shoes. Purim, which they can't normally, and they can sit on a normal chair to um, to 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 hear the Megillah as well. And uh, if possible, they should have minion in a house. Um, if someone again is in twenty one, it's no matter if someone is uh, between the passing of a close relative that's a shivaful and the funeral. In which case the person is exempt from many mitzvahs because they need to take care of the, the funeral arrangements. And also they're not really in a proper frame of mind to be able to, uh, uh, to do with things. Um, he should still hear them. He should have someone else read the Megillah. It's questionable whether he's really obligated, but someone else is reading it. If they would read for him and, 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 uh, and he can hear it. Okay, so I guess we will uh, stop there. The clock, and we'll continue uh, next Sunday. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Take care. Bye, Rabbi. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Thank you, Rabbi. Welcome.